getting into the mind of a killer is a, is a complex thing. Maybe sometimes the motive uh, is, is a little more straightforward. In this case, uh, we're still developing and we're putting the evidence together to hopefully answer that question as to why. We do consider this to be a serial killer. Uh, it meets the, quali the qualifications or definition of being a serial killer. In this case, we have four people that have been uh, murdered. It's the first thing I thought it was a drug dealer. Like, who else would do this? It's a border patrol agent. I was like, what? Authorities arrested Juan David Ortiz, a 10-year veteran and a supervisor with Laredo Sector Border Patrol. He's facing four charges of murder and one charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and unlawful restraint. In September 2018, women started turning up dead on the outskirts of Laredo, Texas. The body of 29-year-old Melissa Ramirez was the first to be discovered. A rancher found her on the side of Texas Highway 255. She had been shot in the head multiple times. More than a week later, two miles east, on the same stretch of road, another victim was found. 42-year-old Claudine Luera had also been shot in the head more than once. People in the streets already knew that it was her. And I was like, how? How do they know? How do they know? I called my sister at that point and I said, you need to call the cops. I said, because people are reaching out to me and telling me that this is Claudine. I said, and I'm freaking out because I don't know what's going on. I didn't, I didn't know there was a first murder. Now they're saying that this is her. And sure enough, the coroners did let us know that it was my sister. And I just broke down. I just felt like I was in a nightmare. Claudine was a single mother of five children and was one of four sisters. Her family says she struggled to find a path in life. So she did have that crowd of friends that she would hang around with. She had her good crowd of friends that were her childhood friends. And um, she started veering off, you know, towards the wrong. And she was doing fine for a few years. But then the kids, of course, started having issues, you know, that we were noticing that something was wrong, you know. And she knew this. She was already getting very, you know, flustered with all the pressures of being a mom to four little kids. I know Claudine was dealing with a lot of guilt, a lot of depression, and, you know, addiction is a monster. You know, it's sad, you know, that one person uses, but the whole family suffers. It was only about two years ago that she opened up to me and told me how bad her habit was. She opened up to me and told me, you don't understand how addicted I am and how long I've been doing this. Like Melissa Ramirez, Claudine turned to the streets for sex work, according to police. Her family took care of her children, waiting and hoping she would one day turn her life around. That day would never come. We never lost hope on Claudine. You know, sadly, he took that away from us. Whatever hopes and dreams that her children had for her, he took that away. The four people that were murdered in this case were all taken to the outskirts of, of town. They were all executed in similar fashion by gunshot wounds. And all of their bodies were left uh, in, in a relatively visible area to be found right on the, on the side of the road. A uh, very violent nature, very cold, callous manner in which the people were, were executed. There was a sense of guilt because of the way he left her. I couldn't get over that. And he left her like trash on the side of the road. And I thought she didn't deserve that, regardless of what we went through in life with her. Nobody deserved that. But authorities got an unexpected break in the case hours after Claudine's body was found. That night, a woman in distress ran up to a Texas trooper at a gas station, saying she had just been attacked, and she knew where her attacker lived. The woman, also a sex worker, identified as Erica Pena, says she got in the car with the man who she knew as David. He was a prior customer and he brought her to his house. The man was a border patrol agent. Knowing that, she told investigators that she asked David if he knew anything about her friend, Melissa Ramirez. 
She told investigators that she was suspicious of his behavior after she asked the question. But she says she tried asking him again as he was driving her to San Bernardo Avenue, a busy street where sex workers are known to hang out. That's when she said he snapped. Uh, apparently the uh, suspect pulled out a gun on her and she was able to escape. Using the information she provided, police issued a bolo for 35-year-old Juan David Ortiz, an intelligence supervisor for U.S. Customs and Border Protection. Police say they found him hours later at a gas station. He ran, but was later found hiding in a parking garage. He was arrested, but not before he could kill again. Police had already killed two more victims. The third victim was found a few hours after authorities captured Ortiz on I-35, a mile marker 20. The fourth victim was found the same day later in the afternoon after Ortiz confessed, also along I-35, but on mile marker 14. Both of these victims were picked up along San Bernardo and killed with a gunshot to their head. Investigators say during a nine-hour taped confession, Ortiz confessed to killing two more women after Erica Pena escaped from his car. The third and fourth victims were Giselda Hernandez Cantu and Janelle Ortiz. The victims had encountered each other at some point while working on the streets of Laredo. What I've been told is they hung out, they, you know, they looked out for each other. That was my, what I've been told. You know, they were friends. Uh, these individuals, you know, may have had their issues, may have had their problems. However, it was not up to Juan David Ortiz to decide to end their lives. Nobody has that right. Nobody has the right to, to unilaterally decide that another person shouldn't live uh, and then execute them as if they're just an inanimate object. Perpetrator made a mistake. Law enforcement kept the on top. Police tried to put the public at ease by letting them know that an arrest had been made but news that their suspect was a law enforcement officer was another shot to the community. Getting the call that Saturday on the 15th at 6 in the morning, um, my police friend called me saying we got him. And at first I thought it was her ex-boyfriend. She said, no, it's a border patrol agent. That just blew me away. I was like, what? And she was like, yes. She goes, and there may be more bodies. I was expecting somebody from the streets, you know, and I was like a border patrol agent. And then they told me he went after another victim and another victim, and I was in shock. I was like, what is going on? And being in a position of trust, and being a, a border patrol agent, makes it even more egregious that somebody who is entrusted with protection and defending the Constitution and the, and the laws of the United States that he would commit murder of this, of this magnitude. Multiple people that he decided in his own mind that uh, these people did not deserve to live. At least they caught him. At least they caught him. That, that's my thing. A lot of families that have unsolved mysteries and I told my sister, well, he was caught. He's going to pay for it. Juan David Ortiz has pleaded not guilty to the charges against him and is being held on more than $2 million bail as he awaits trial. The district attorney says if Ortiz is found guilty, he will pursue the death penalty as punishment. You know, what makes a person reach the level where they become so callous and so detached emotionally and morally to make that conscious decision to take a life um, and not think about it twice and just go about their business and act like it's nothing that's happened. That's very disturbing, very scary. Claudine Luera's family says they will be present when Ortiz has his day in court. I believe justice, whatever justice Mr. Alanis pursues, I have my utmost faith in him and I know he'll do what is right for all the family, because ultimately the one who has the last judgment call is the man upstairs. You know, I, I do believe
really, you know, no debt goes unpaid for. For now, they continue to honor their sister's memory while mourning her and the other women. They're hoping others in Claudine's situation will find their way home before something happens to them. I'll always remember her laugh, you know, when we would talk, because I would always make her laugh, she would always make me laugh. And my last conversation with her was, she was saying, I miss mom, I really miss mom.